All right, hi folks. Hope everybody's doing well. Uh, I tried something different this time. I tried to set it up as an event that you could tie into uh, because I thought maybe it would help viewership, but I don't think it did. So I've started the video over, uh, and uh, welcome to the program. I know we're running a little late, uh, but that's okay. We are making a wonderful dish called Rigatoni Almanzo. It is rigatoni with beautiful filet and a little fresh peas, and it's done in a veal demi-glaze sauce. So I have already seared off my fillets, okay? What you want to do is you sear them. You don't want to cook them any more than that. Hello, Bill, good to see you. Robert's watching. So just sear them. They're going to be very rare when we slice them, but we're going to put them back into the sauce. Now, this sauce is built on a demi-glaze. You can make a veal demi-glaze, but it's a lot of work. I'm going to give you a shortcut, and this is what I did today. You go to Gelson's or other grocery stores. I found it at Gelson's. Uh, Provimi, which makes great veal products, also makes this wonderful veal demi-glaze. It's gluten-free. It's ready to use. All you have to do, it comes frozen. Throw it in your fridge. Let it thaw out overnight, and then we're ready to use it. And that's what we're going to build our sauce on. So I've got two very nice fillets. They're about nine ounces each. I've got my veal demi-glaze. All right, that's a full two cups. That's 16 ounces, all right? That's what you need. Now, in the pan where I seared off the wonderful fillets, we're going to add in. Now, I've just, look, I've seared them off, but we've still got the olive oil that I used. Uh, what we want to do is preserve that. And we're going to deglaze the pan. First, we're going to add in, because this demi glaze is already done and it's beautiful and perfect, you don't need to do a lot to it, but we're going to add in. Just a couple of shallots, all right? So I've sliced up the shallots really nice and thin. If you guys have ever watched the movie Goodfellas, you know how to do garlic and shallots. You slice them very thin. Uh, uh, Paul has used a razor blade, so it would liquefy and just a little bit of olive oil is a good thing. All right, you remember that from the movie. So we got our shallots. We're going to pop those in. And you want to use shallots because, again, this is going to be a very rich sauce. It is also going to be uh, a very delicate sauce. <laughs> I need to have you and Barry over. Okay, we'll, uh, we'll think about that. When we can all get back together, we'll do that. Uh, hello, Wendy. All right, so I'm sautéing my shallots in the pan where I seared the beef. And I want to show you those, those fillets are just gorgeous. They're about nine ounces each. I cut them from a beautiful piece of tenderloin that I got from my friends at Crown Meats. Crown does, does some of the best meats. I hope you guys poured yourself a cocktail. I certainly have. I've been on a little bit of a gin kick. I didn't drink gin for a long time, but in this long, hot summer of ours. Um, <laughs> hello, Reed. My, cousin, my nephew, Reed, who is a chef. Uh, here's to you, sir. Um, you're going to come out to California. You're going to sous chef for me, or I'm going to sous chef for you. We're going to do that. Anyway, tonight I'm drinking a little gin, but I want to tell you about this gin and tonic. Gin is called Bombay Sapphire, which you are familiar with, but it's Bombay Sapphire East. They've added extra lemongrass and uh, Vietnamese black peppercorns. It is so good. It is so delicious, so refreshing on these hot days. Anyway, let's get back to the recipe. I've got my shallots in here. So we're going to saute those in the uh, pan. We had a little bit of olive oil. We did the beef. I got the temperature just medium want to overcook these shallots, we're just going to sweat them out a little bit. All right, so we're doing that. While we're doing that, we're going to add in a little bit of garlic. And I want to show you a little trick. I'm going to point the camera over here. I'm going to show you something that I dearly love. But if you're doing garlic and you want to do it in a hurry, okay, so here's a clove of garlic, but I haven't peeled it or anything. You get one of these little sleeves, and it is a garlic peeler. You get these at any uh, kitchen store. This is great. Watch this. So unpeeled garlic, we throw it in just like that, and then you roll it around like that. It comes out completely. It just peels off the husk like that, so you don't have to worry about it. And then we just take that garlic. We're going to slice it up nice and thin uh, because we're going to throw this in with the shallots. Normally, I don't show you me doing all the chopping and stuff. I prepare ahead of time. But I wanted to show you this little tool because it's great for skin and garlic in a hurry. All right, here we go. So now I've got about three cloves of garlic. So I've got 
the shallots, they're already just about uh, simmered down to where I want them. So we're going to throw the garlic in, just like that. Oh, that's nice. Very nice. Okay. And again, we're doing this in the pan that we seared the beef in. We just seared off the beef. You don't want to overcook it because we're going to put it back in the sauce. So now I've got my, charlotte, uh, my shallots and my garlic in the pan with a little bit of olive oil. That's getting nice and aromatic. Again, you never want to burn the garlic because then it gets uh, very bitter. So we just want to saute it a little bit over medium heat. Don't get it too hot. Uh, and this is in here with all of those wonderful uh, beef juices from where we seared the beef. Now, we're going to turn the heat up just a little bit, and I've got a tiny splash of wine. This is, this is not very much, about a half a cup, maybe a little less. I'm going to put that in there. All right, well, just like that. And now we're going to turn the heat up, and we're going to saute that down. What you want to do is cook off all of that liquid, because we're going to add our wonderful demi-glaze. So we don't need a whole lot of red wine with this, but what we're going to do is just deglaze the pan because we seared our beef, we put in the shallots, we put in the garlic, and now I'm going to cook them down in a little bit of red wine, and then we're going to add in this wonderful demi-glaze. And again, you can make demi-glaze from scratch. It takes a lot of work. You've got to roast the bones, and then you've got to put it in like 20 quarts of water and cook it down. It's, it's a long process. So it's easier to go and buy this Provimi demi-glaze. They're not sponsoring this program, but I'm telling you, this is the way to go if you need a demi-glaze in the sauce. And demi-glaze is the sauce for this dish. And this is what uh, Vince over at La Spiga taught me. And La Spiga is a great restaurant. I stole this recipe from Vince and Connie. Apologies to you guys. It, La Spiga is a great restaurant right next to uh, Cuisto in Palm Desert. If you've never been, you got to go. In, and for you folks who are not in the desert, you will love it. Uh, it's a special occasion restaurant, no doubt. It's not something you just rifle off on a Tuesday unless you've got a little extra pocket change. Uh, hey, Stacy, good to see you. Um, so, but Vince told me, he's, you know, because I, I have this dish. I mean, you go there and you get veal and lobster and all this great stuff, and I always get the same pasta dish because it is so delicious. All right, so we've got, I'm going to bring you over here so you can see this. All right, so what we've got is garlic, shallots, a little red wine. I'm going to let that cook down. And remember, this was in the pan where I seared off my fillets. Those look really good. Don't worry, they, they are a little rare, but that's on purpose. You want them nice and rare. Hi, Jan. Good to see you. So I started this video as, as an event, and that didn't work very well. So we're just going to keep doing it this way. All right, so I've cooked that down quite a bit. Now, oh, this demi-glaze. And remember, I've added some shallots and garlic, but the demi-glaze is going to have all of that in there. So we're going to add that in, just like that. Oh, this stuff is so good. So good. I'm just going to put a little splash of additional liquid like that. All right. So now we've got a little red wine, but we've got the demi-glaze. We've got the shallots and the garlic. And all of this, we're going to bring up the temperature. Now, this dish does require a little tomato, but not a lot of tomato. This is not a tomato-based dish. When you serve this dish, it's going to be more of a, a brown sauce or gravy on your pasta than it is going to be a red sauce. But what we are going to do is put a little tomato puree. Now, I've got uh, Muti is one of my favorite Italian products. comes out of Parma, Italy, where you get uh, some great cheese. Uh, and other great Italian products. Uh, so you can find this at a number of grocery stores. This is, this is a great one. And the thing I like about this, of course you can get a can of, of tomato puree, but this is great because you can use a little bit of it. We're not going to use a lot. We're not going to put a lot of tomato into this dish. So I'm bringing that demi-glaze back up to temperature, and we're going to add in a little bit, but then you can reseal the bottle so you can use it over and over again. All right, so let's get this heated up. And I've got fresh peas, which we're going to put in in just a little bit. Let those cook down. I've already seared off my uh, fillets. I've got about uh, eh, two 9-ounce fillets, so about 18 ounces of fillet we're going to put in there. And we're going to slice that up, and then we're going to slice it up nice and thin. So what we're going to do is bring the sauce up to temperature, 
get that demi-glaze going. Then I'm going to add in my tomato. And while, while we're doing that, then we're going to throw in the peas. Peas are going to take about six to eight minutes to kind of cook and get nice and tender. You, you don't want them mushy. I'm not trying to make pea soup here. What we're trying to make is a, a delicious dish with those fresh peas. They're going to turn a vibrant green. They're going to be just right. Maybe a little al dente, but not much. So we've got to bring our sauce back up to temperature, which is what we're doing here. These wonder Nan Tomasco sent me these wonderful tools. So we're going to, and remember, I just put in a little bit of wine, about a quarter of a cup on top of the garlic, garlic and shallots, because you don't want to overdo it. The, the demi glaze is already going to have that in, and it's such a delicate, beautiful sauce. So you don't want to go crazy with it. I'll show you my spoon rest. You know that this house of dachshunds, so that's. That's the spoon rest that we use here. So the dachshunds have gotten bored with the cooking. Uh, I already cooked off my pasta. I did a full pound, uh, nice Renzoni rigatoni. Hello, Tim Kiley, my boss at work, our assistant news director, KSQ News Channel 3. Uh, Tim, this is not a vegetarian dish. I did one of those last week, um, but there are ways that you can make. No, there's no way you can make this vegetarian. Sorry. Uh, <laughs> but I'm glad you're watching anyway. So we did the Renzoni. I like Renzoni. This was the brand we always ate growing up because it stays nice and al dente. So we've got the, the pasta already cooked off and ready to go. So we're going to put that into the sauce when we're good and ready, but we're not ready yet. All right, so I brought the temperature back. I want you to take a look at this. Now this is just our garlic, shallots, red wine, and the demi-glaze itself. You're not going to, not going to, Heat this up too much. You just want to bring this up to temperature. And look how gorgeous that sauce is. It already has a beautiful sheen on it. And this was done right in the pan where we deglazed uh, the pan after searing our beef. And there are the peas. And we're going to put those peas in, in just a minute. But first, we're going to add in our tomato. So, and as I told you, we don't want a lot of tomato. And that's why I'm using this uh, because I can reseal the jar. All right, I know it looks yummy already. So we got that. Let's see if I ah, there we go. Honestly, the amount of tomato I'm going to put in. Uh, da, da, da. Let's say about a half a cup of tomatoes. Hello, Jennifer. Good to see you. So, and again, this is going to be more of a brown sauce than a red sauce. The tomato is to add a little richness to it, uh, to actually cut a, cut down on on the demi glaze a little bit. So we're going to add that in. But we're not making a red sauce out of this. We're, we're just enhancing the demi-glaze a little bit. I'm going to stir that in. We'll get a good look at it. If we think we need a little more tomato, we'll put it in. Now, the one thing that you will notice when we serve this dish, uh, it's not like making the Sunday sauce or gravy. Oh, that is really pretty. I think we can stand to put maybe a little more tomato in. Not much. We're real close on that. And you don't want to overdo the tomato. So I want you to take a look at this. Remember, it was that beautiful, rich brown color. Now we've added a little tomato, so it is still gorgeous, but it leans more toward the demi-glaze than tomato. I'm going to put just a little splash more of tomato, but not much. Not much. Uh, I was saying, often with pasta dishes, we like, to, um, we like the pasta kind of swimming in the sauce. You know, our Sunday dinners, you had the pasta, the meatballs. Uh, Hello, Mary. Good to see you. Uh, one of my uh, high school friends, Mary Vermillion, grew up with her in Charlottesville. All right, so I just put in a little bit, just a dash more of tomato. Uh, with this dish, and you're going to see it when I plate it, because we're going we're gonna to plate this up in just a little bit. All right, that's the perfect amount of tomato. This dish is not swimming in sauce. It is going to be, the pasta is going to be lightly coated. The sauce is going to have our beef in it. It's going to have the peas in it. And so now we've got, let's take a look. I want you guys to see this. This is about exactly where you want it. So that is not quite a cup of tomato. I'd say three quarters of a cup of tomato in 16 ounces of demi-glaze, a splash of red wine, and our garlic and shallots and olive oil. All right? That looks perfect. And that is exactly what we want. So now... We've already seared off the beef. The, the beef that's ready to go. All right, we've got peas. 
delicious fresh peas. We want to, they're going to take, as I said, about six to eight minutes to cook. So we're going to add those into the sauce just like that. Stir those in, and we're going to bring it up to temperature and let the peas cook a little bit. So we'll cover it, and we'll bring it up to temperature. That is good. I, you know what we need? Just a little salt and pepper. I don't want to freak Richard Herwig out, but we're going to put a little fresh cracked pepper. you got to have that. And a little, this is Himalayan salt. It's that pink salt. Don't want to make it too salty. That demi-glaze is going to have a lot of salt in it, so that's plenty right there. And we'll, um, I'll bring you back over and let you take a look at this. So again, when we put the pasta in this and serve it, this is not going to be swimming in sauce. It's going to be a nice, delicate, light sauce because this is really rich stuff. Take a look at that. So we've got our peas, the demi-glaze, a little tomato puree. You can put in like a little one of those small cans of sauce if you want to do that. That's an easy way to do it. And that's going to add a little different spice to it. I just like the pure tomato. So that's going to cook. We're going to let those peas come up to temperature. While we're doing that, uh, of course, we're going to slice our beef. So we can get ready to do that. And the one thing every kitchen needs, of course, a good sharp set of knives. And I don't want you guys to uh, how rare the beef is uh, because we just seared it off. I know it's pepper. Don't worry about it. You won't even taste it. We seared these because when we throw them back in the sauce, the beef will continue to cook. So you just sear them off to a very, very nice rare. And what we're going to do is just slice that ever so thin and just like that. It, if you Philly cheesesteak sandwich, you know how thin the beef has to be sliced? That's kind of, it's almost like a shaved beef. See how thin that is? Just like that, okay? So, and I know, the beef is very rare, but that's exactly what we wanted. We wanted to sear it. Don't worry, it will cook a little bit more when we put it into the sauce. So, like I said, I have two of these lovely, these are prime 9-ounce fillets. And all I did was salt and pepper these. There's no other seasoning on this beef at all. And you don't need it because it's all in the sauce. And this, trust me, is going to be one of the tastiest pasta dishes you guys have ever had. You will love it. You will serve it over and over again. And uh, if you go to La Spiga, I encourage you to order it because it is so good. Uh, La Spiga has a great outdoor seating area. I think they're open now. You know, so many of our favorite restaurants aren't open at present, so we're having to duplicate our favorite restaurants. I mentioned this earlier. I'm going to mention it again. My good friend Michael Costelli, Costelli's Restaurant, just opening back up. And, you know, one of the great places to go in the desert. I love Costelli's. I'm going to get rid of the, that little bit of fat. I'm just going to... That'll be something for the dogs to enjoy. All right, so now we're just going to continue to slice our beef nice and thin. While we're doing this, the peas are cooking off to the appropriate temperature. And you can see just how rare this beef is. But again, don't worry. We're going to throw it back into the demi-glaze sauce with those wonderful tomatoes. And just a little bit of garlic and shallots and red wine. So we've enhanced the demi-glaze. We have not uh, really done much more than that to it. And that's the richness and, and flavor of this sauce and this dish. You're going to love it when you try this. Uh, and like I said, if you go to La Spiga and you order this, you can ignore the veal chop. You can ignore their, uh, their Tuscan ribeye. Just order this pasta dish. And, you know, when I go out to a special dinner, uh, often I'm thinking, no, I don't want to get the pasta. I can get pasta anywhere, right? All right, there's our, our beef. It is sliced beautifully. That piece of little fatty. I'm going to save that for... All right, so there we go. This is ready. Let's check on the sauce over here. All right. That's boiling, so let's bring that down. I don't want to beat up this sauce too much. Oh, look at that. Holy cow, that's nice. That's thickening up beautifully. I'm going to turn the heat down on that. Those peas are coming along nicely. We want them nice and tender, uh, but we don't want them mushy. Like I said, we're not making pea soup. This is not Anderson's. We're not on the way to Solvang. We're... Uh, 
making a beef and pea dish with rigatoni. All right. So now we have cut down on the temperature. Hello, Susan. Good to see you. Uh, so we backed way off on the temperature, brought it up. The peas are cooking nicely. I'm going to add in our beef. And actually, before I do that, I'm going to cut this just a little bit into smaller pieces. So about half the size of of those fillets. You can just cut it up a little bit. I know you can't see what I'm doing. There we go. I'll show you now. All right, so what I've done is, so the, I've sliced the beef in just a nice bite-sized pieces. So again, you sear it just to a nice, perfect rare. And <laughs> Richard is fussy about the texture. I'll bet you are. Uh, <laughs> ours, thank you for noticing the loafers. All right, so now, We've got that demi-glaze with the tomatoes, the garlic, the shallot, the red wine. We're going to put our beef in there, just like that. Oh, marvelous. Bingo. Now, stir that in. Perfect. Okay. I want you to take a good look at what we got going on over here, because you're going to love it. All right, and so we're going to bring that back up to temperature. But again, I'm not going to cook the beef a whole lot more. It's going to it's going to simmer off in there. The peas are just about done. We can cover that up for just a little bit. And when we're ready to serve this, there's a little trick at the end that we're going to do, right at the very end. We're going to let that cook for just a little bit. You don't want it. Um, I want to cook more of that. And again, the jar of of uh, Tomato puree is the perfect choice for this because you're not going to use the whole can and you're going to have leftover so you just seal it up and we're going to be able to make whatever we want out of that and then the uh, tomato stays nice and fresh in that jar. All right, so cheers. I hope everybody's having a great week so far. Uh, this, this, I'm telling you, Jill, this is such a great dish. You're going to love it. Mm. So, all right. Now, I, want, I still want to bring that back up to temperature, so I'm going to turn the heat back up on it just a little bit. Grab my tongs. All right. So I want this to bubble around, but I don't want to, I don't want to overcook that beef because it is just so perfect, and you kind of want it at a nice medium rare. So I seared it to a very rare sear, and now we're just going to cook it a little bit more in that wonderful demi-glaze. All right. Oh. This is such a fantastic dish, and uh, oh, that's so nice, so nice. I want you guys to take a look at this. Come back over here for just a moment, and you can see how good that looks. And now, the little trick that I like to do at the end, not much, but just a little, we're going to add a little butter in, just on top. Just like that, and just like, okay, that. Again, this is going to be a rich, yet very nice, delicate sauce. We're going to stir that in, let that butter melt. Oh, that is more. Now, this is going to give you just a really beautiful sheen to the sauce when you serve it. And so it's just going to make it look beautiful. It's going to add a little touch of texture to it. And... You're thoroughly going to love this. And again, when we serve this, we're not going to plate a lot of sauce with this. But you can see, I think you can see this, the consistency of the sauce. It is, it's nice, but it's not super thick. And you can see that the beef is cooking off nicely. Now, we're ready. We're just going to add in our pasta. Just like this. Drain this earlier, so I'm trying not to break up all my rigatoni. Add in all your pasta, just right into the pan, just like that. Okay, beautiful. There we go. Now, it's a little starchy, so it's stuck together, but no worries, because we're just going to stir this in. Oh, now we got something going. And again, 
This is not going to be swimming in sauce. What's going to happen is the pasta is going to absorb a little of that. It's going to coat it. I love rigatoni for this. Rigatoni is my father's favorite pasta. And when I posted that I was going to do this recipe, it was funny because a lot of people were like, oh, that's, that's our favorite pasta. So what you want to do is just toss the rigatoni in the sauce, just like that. And one of the things, and I should have done it, should have reserved a little bit of my pasta sauce and tossed it in there as well, the water from the pasta. And that would have increased the volume a little bit. And when you put that starchy water in with your pasta, the sauce kind of clings to the pasta a little bit better. But don't worry, this is going to be perfect. I just want to make sure we get all of that rigatoni coated in our sauce. Oh, look at that. That is so good. Oh, this is going to be perfect. And again, it's going to be a little bit more of a brown sauce than a red sauce, even though there's a bit of tomato in here. It is really all about the demi-glaze. And it's what makes this dish so rich, so delicious. So I'm going to cover that up for just a second and let that heat up. Get all my rigatonis, get all those beautiful rigatonis covered in pasta and sauce. It is going to be terrific. You're going to love this. And I'm going to plate it up for you. Uh, I prefer to serve this in a pasta bowl uh, because you want to hold all that sauce. Uh, no manicot, <laughs> David Wall. No, no manicot, not on this one. So I'll put that there. I've got my pasta sauce back up to temperature. We're going to take a look at this. I want you guys to see this. I'm going to give it a toss, real quick toss. Oh, look at Wait until you guys see this. You are going to wish that you were having dinner over here tonight because, trust me, there are a lot of good dinners going on in the Coachella Valley tonight. This is the best one because this sauce is out of this world. So now I've got the pasta mixed in with my beef and peas. The peas are cooked off perfectly. I want you to take a look at this. All right. Kill the light so you can see a little better. That is absolutely gorgeous and ready to go. So we're going to plate that up. If you'll just give me a moment. I gotta find the right tool here for what I want to do. Where's my big spoon? There it is. All right. Now. All right. So we've got our rigatoni. We got the peas, the beef, the fillet. Gotta dig in there. Get a bit of those fillet pieces. In your pasta. Oh, this is so gorgeous. So gorgeous and so delicious. I broke up my rigatonis, but that's okay. Tonight, there are no extra points for presentation. But I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to wipe the edge of the dish anyway. All right, ladies and gentlemen, here you go. This is rigatoni almanzo with fresh peas. You will love this dish. Trust me on this one. It is fantastic. Um, the flavors just explode exponentially on this dish. You're going to love it. So, anyway, I'll recap real quick. What you do, get yourself filled demi glaze, 16 ounces. You can buy it or you can make it. You're going to add in about three quarters of a cup of tomatoes. First, you're going to sear your fillets, salt and pepper, a little olive oil. Sear them on both sides, take them out. Then add in uh, two shallots, sliced nice and thin, about two cloves of garlic chopped up, saute that, add in about a quarter cup of red wine and cook it down. Then add in the demi-glaze. Let that come up to temperature. Add in a little bit of your tomato. Bring that up to temperature. Add in your peas. Let them cook. While they're cooking, slice off your beef. Cut it off into nice bite-sized pieces. It's going to be very rare because you only seared it, but it's going to cook off in the sauce. Add the beef back in once the peas are ready. Bring that up to temperature. Let it simmer for just a little bit. Let the flavors meld a little bit, and then you add in your pasta, which you already cooked off. And what you're going to have is one of the best pasta dishes that you've ever enjoyed. So trust me on this. Rigatoni Almanzo with my apologies and my thanks to Vince and Connie at La Spiga Restaurant. 
uh, one of the great restaurants. Uh, and I haven't stolen a recipe because Vince didn't give it to me. I've sort of made it up as I went along, but I think it's a pretty good approximation. Cheers to you guys. Have a great evening. Have a great weekend. Next weekend we're going to do uh, something fun here in the kitchen next week on Thursday. I haven't quite decided yet. Uh, one of the things I've been thinking about, fried mozzarella sticks. One of my favorite treats, and it's football season, and it's a great way to feed the crowd. And you can make them at home from scratch, and they're really, really terrific. Anyway, thanks for joining me in the kitchen, and enjoy this rigatoni almanzo. I'll post the recipe, uh, and you can spread the video around, tell people about the YouTube channel. They can subscribe to it. Uh, it's real easy, and it's free, and I put all the recipes there. Uh, I'm slowly populating. It's taken me a little while. Anyway, great to spend time with you. Thanks for joining me in the kitchen, and have a great Thursday evening.